Hello, I'm MC Toon. Flat Earthers often like to talk about the magnetic North Pole. There seems to be a lot of confusion about it. Often they will claim that the Flat Earth idea works well with the Earth's observed magnetism. They'll show an AE map with the North Magnetic Pole in the middle, then show how a compass works on it. They'll say this matches the observation that compasses generally point north. At times, they even claim this is proof of a Flat Earth. The more desperate ones will assert that this is proof of a flat earth without even trying to show it doesn't work on a spherical earth. For example, Patrick Shank has a video titled, A Compass Proves Flat Earth. Now buckle up, he's going to prove it's flat. To do this, he will show how the flat earth matches all observations and simultaneously disproves all other models wrong. Sphere, concave, cat earth. This will be epic. Sorry, that that wasn't epic. That was meh. He seems to think he's onto something revolutionary, as if every fifth grade science class hasn't played with magnets and compasses. How does he jump to the conclusion that the Earth is flat because of this simplistic example? I have no idea. He doesn't even try to examine how this disproves the Earth, or a concave, or cat Earth. Patrick personally challenged me to do this experiment with a sphere. He seemed extremely confident that he had a gotcha on me. I have to admit I was confused. This isn't a hard problem. Everyone knows a magnet has a three-dimensional magnetic field around it. Or maybe not everybody. Patrick, are you aware that magnets have a three-dimensional field? Maybe this is new information. I'm always glad to educate someone. A small amount of searching will give you good information about how the Earth's magnetic field works. For example, this web page from National Resources Canada says, The magnetic field of the Earth resembles the field produced by a simple bar magnet. Such a field is called a dipole field because it has two poles, located at either end of the magnet, where the strength of the field is maximum. At the midpoint between the poles, the strength is half the value at the poles. Then jumping down, if we could place a bar magnet inside the Earth, inclined approximately 11 degrees to the rotational axis and offset by about 550 kilometers from the Earth's center, we could account for 90% of the observed magnetic field. We could, could account for the remaining 10% by placing smaller bar magnets at strategic locations around the primary magnet. Well, I can do that. For my example, I have this stack of magnets from disassembled hard drives for the bar magnet. For illustration, I put them in this mini soccer ball as the globe stand-in. Here's a regular compass. One side points to the north magnetic pole, the other points to the south magnetic pole. You can see when the compass is away from our model globe, it points to the Earth's magnetic north pole. When it gets close to the globe, the magnet inside overpowers the real Earth's magnetic field, and the compass points to north on our model globe. As I move the compass around, it continues to point north. Also notice that the other side of the compass needle points to the south magnetic pole at the bottom of the ball here. The compass works the same as observed on Earth. There's a north magnetic pole and a south magnetic pole. At this point, I've demonstrated a scale model globe with a magnet and compass matching observations. To prove to Patrick that I'm not doing anything funny, I will take the, the stack of magnets out of the ball here. 
It's a little difficult. I had one hand holding the camera while filming and the other hand to get that stack out of the ball. It didn't come easily. I didn't leave much room in the ball because I wanted the magnets to stay in there firmly. But in just a second here, I pop them out, pull them out, and I'll, I'll use the magnet, or sorry, the compass, one more time to show you that it still works next to this stack of magnets. Now, we could have done this without the ball and just held it above the stack of magnets like this and moved it around, but the ball was a little more fun. So, and somehow Patrick thinks it was magic. I don't know why. Seems pretty basic to me. You can see it twisting around. Nothing, nothing unusual. Well, this settles Patrick's silly little challenge, but there's more wrong about his idea. Remember when I mentioned that my compass pointed to the south pole as well? On Patrick's model, where was the south magnetic pole? He didn't have one. The entire outside edge was south on his silly little map. No actual single point. However, on real Earth, there's a real south magnetic pole at a single point. It's currently in the ocean south of Australia. Since the exact location of both magnetic poles is an undeniable fact, any flat earth model must include these. Patrick has completely failed kindergarten level magnets. We could end here, but there's so much more to the failures of globe deniers when they think they understand the earth's magnetic field. The earth's magnetic field has a measurable direction. Very rarely does magnetic north point to true north. The variation from true north is called declination. Good maps have a legend stating the declination for the map and the date for this declination. The date is important because the declination changes over time. The lines of declination are complex and make sense for a sphere. Here's a Mercator projection map showing the declination for 2019. Geologists study the makeup of the Earth and have a good understanding of how the Earth's magnetic field is created. They say it's the movement of the iron outer core due to thermal convection. This includes an understanding of why the magnetic field isn't perfectly symmetrical. If the Earth were flat, the lines of declination would look very different from the lines of declination on a sphere. I'll do the work for them and place the north and south poles on the common AE map. Now I'll draw the magnetic lines. Are these accurate? Are these what the flat Earth model predicts? I don't know. Unfortunately, there aren't any flat earth geologists, so I can only guess. One thing is certain, there is no flat earth understanding of what causes the earth's magnetic field if the earth were flat. Is it a molten iron layer somewhere? A, si a simple permanent magnet? Many flat earthers like to suggest it's a permanent magnet, but if that's the case, what causes it to move? Well, whatever it is, the observed declination variations are not at all similar to what the flat earth idea predicts. For example, compasses in South Africa on a flat earth would point very closely due north. However, it's observed to point 22 degrees east of due north. That's a significant difference. So, declination doesn't work for the flat earth. What a surprise. What other observations can we test? Well, Magnetic inclination or magnetic dip is how much below the horizontal the magnetic field points. This is measured using a special compass called a dip compass. Watch this video for a short demonstration. So currently the needle can move around in that plane and will align the rotation axis of the dip meter with the compass needle such that zero degrees is at the north end of our magnet. Then I can rotate this 90 degrees and the needle can oscillate and move in this vertical plane. The dip angle is defined from negative 90 to positive 90 with positive dip being a measure below the horizontal. So does the flat earth idea match with observed inclination? Let's look at Brazil in South America. On a flat earth being far away from the North Pole and on the opposite side as the South Pole, the inclination would be influenced only by the North Pole and it would be slightly downward. However, observed inclination is upward. 
they don't match. Here's a map of the 2019 inclination measurements for the Earth. It's easy to see how the inclination in the north points down, and in the south it points up. So how about the measured strength of the Earth's magnetic field at different points? If you recall the article that I read, it said that the strength of the magnetic field is closest next to the, each of the poles and weakest in the middle. We see this on Earth, this is measured. How does this work for the flat Earth? Well, the North Pole is at the North, the South Pole is over near Australia. That means that the southern tip of South America is the farthest point away from any pole. It must have the weakest magnetic force. Here's a 2019 map of magnetic field intensity. You can see the force is weakest in the middle of Brazil around 23,000 nanoteslas. But it increases farther south. At Cape Horn, the field strength increases to about 32,000 nanoteslas. If the Earth were flat, the strength must continue to decrease as it gets farther away from the poles, not increase. However, since Cape Horn is closer to the south magnetic pole on the other side of Antarctica, the magnetic field strength increases. Well, I'm sure a geologist could list off a dozen more issues. These questions could be addressed to all the flat Earth geologists, if any existed, but there are none. wonder why that is. Um, well, I'd like to thank Patrick Shank for challenging me to this test um, of the, how the Earth's magnetic field works. If he didn't, I wouldn't have collected this information disproving the flat Earth idea. Again, I want to thank him for sending me to the whole collection of flat Earth memes on his Facebook group. I know I can always pop into the folder of these memes and make a quick video debunking his poorly researched ideas. Thank you for watching. If you're new, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you want to join in on the discussion or present a third grade level idea for Earth's magnetic field on the flat Earth, join my Discord server. I'll have the uh, link in the description. <laughs>